Podcasting Robots. Hey, we're going to build a jousting robot. That's right, a robot that has some sort of sword on it that travels along a line and it travels towards another one and they collide and we can see which robot can joust the best. We're gonna put a little minifigure on each one too and that's gonna be like the knight riding the chariot to joust against the other one. I know jousting's normally on horses, but today our jousters will be on chariots that you will build out of Lego Spy Prime. Here's some more rules.
me battle using our jousting robots. We're going to make the jousting stick start in an upright position. So when the program starts, we're going to move the jousting stick to an upright position using this block here, a blue block that says go the shortest path to a certain position. Now it's hard to know what that exact position is if you don't connect. So when you've built your robot and you've connected, let's connect now, just press connect and green and connect. You'll notice that when your motor is connected that controls your jousting stick, it has a certain number of degrees there. Now what you should do is put it in an upright position and it will be different for everyone depending on how you built your robot. On my robot, an upright position is probably about 360 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to set this here to 360 degrees or 359, whatever it is when it's in the best position for an upright. Okay, so when the program starts, the jousting stick's always going to move to that position. But then we're going to make it um, go down and move forward by choosing from the events tab, from the events tab, choose the block that says when the left button is pressed. We're going to activate our jousting robot when we press the left button on the hub. Okay, this will just get the stick in the right position to start, but when you want to battle, you're going to press that button on the left. So everyone will get their stick in the start in the starting position at the start. But when they want to battle, you go three, two, one, and you press the left button on your hub. Now we're going to get the stick to go down to the right position. So we're going to go the shortest path again. And what you need to do with your jousting stick while you're coding it is just take note up here. You can tap back up onto the connect tab here, or you can just see it here, but it's easy if you just tap on there. Um, if it was 360 degrees when it's in upright, Put it into the best jousting position you can think of. So where about should your stick aim when it's going to try and knock the other guy's knight off? On my particular robot, I like the look of 65 degrees. So when it starts, it's going to move back to 65 degrees. Okay. Remembering that we're going to plug our jousting stick motor into port A. Okay. You can chart, you can plug it into any port you like. But just remember, whatever port you plug it into has to match your code. Then we're going to get it to follow the white line, aren't we? So I find that it's easier if you add a different block to what's already there. These blocks are good, but for line following, I recommend you go down the bottom here, go movement motors or move, more movement, and then you'll have more blocks to choose from here. When we get our chariot to move, we're always got to, you've always got to set the movement mode. The motors that turn the wheels are going to be plugged into C and D. And then we need to say that we want it to move forward. Okay. So you could just say start moving. You can decide what speed you go. Um, maybe start moving it. You don't want to go too fast, otherwise it might not find the line very easily. So I recommend a speed of about 60 to start with. Really with jousting, it doesn't matter how fast you're going because it's all about knocking the other guy off. It's not about getting to the other end quickly. 60% is a good speed. After you start moving, we want it to sort of follow the line. We should use a block that says if, then, else. Okay, now we go to the census tab and we choose the one that says color. If the line is white, we're going to get it to do something. But we need to plug the sensor into one of these other ports we haven't used yet. So let's choose B. I often like to plug the sensors into B. Then I don't have to think about it too much. Now, if you've got white tape on the ground, then this will work well, hopefully. Um, if you don't have white tape, you might want to experiment with reflected light. It's the same thing as detecting white, except it gives you more 
flexibility with how bright it sees the target. You can either use reflected light or you can use the color white. This is probably easier, but this might be more accurate. So let me give you a quick example with this. Sometimes when you put your color sensor on a dark surface, it might only register like 10% light. And when it's on a bright surface, it might register something like 80% light. So what you need to say is, when it's greater than maybe uh, 30, when it's greater than 30, then you can get it to do whatever we're going to do here. So I reckon this might work if you've got whitish tape, or this will work. You have to decide which one to use. But I'm not going to use that one today. I'm going to keep it simple. Okay, I'm assuming you've got white tape on the ground. Well, you can change it to whatever color you want if you've got different color tape. Okay, so if the light is white, we're going to get it to move in a certain direction. And remember I added these blocks down here. I'm going to make it move just slightly off target. Maybe 40, or we'll slow down a little bit, and then maybe 10. Okay, so one wheel is going to go at 40% speed, and the other wheel will go at 10% speed, and this will make it turn slightly. If it turns too much, you could always change the difference between the two. Like if you want a really slight turn, you might go 40 and 30. Okay, and that might be good. Considering you're going in a straight line, that might be all you need. Then we're going to do the opposite of that. If it sees white, it's going to go like this. But if it doesn't see white, then it's going to do the opposite. So, in other words, if it sees white, it's going to go a little bit away from white. And if it doesn't see white, it's going to go towards white. And we want that to loop. We want that to keep going over and over and over again. Let's grab the forever loop. Okay, and put it in here. Then it should work. If it doesn't work, if it seems to be going the wrong way, because you've got to put your robot on the right-hand side of the tape, don't you? Your light sensor needs to go on the right-hand side of the tape. If it seems to be going the wrong way, maybe change it to the opposite and see if that helps. Okay, the challenge is to follow the white line. So there'll be a bit of trial and error involved. You might find that you might want to make the following of the line a bit more drastic, like a bit bigger turns. So you might do something like that. You just have to play with these numbers, but they should always be different and they should always be the opposite down here. That should allow you, when you press play down here, it should First of all, put the sword in the right position. Then won't do anything until you press the left button. When you press the left button, uh, the sword will go into the appropriate position to knock the other guy off. And then it should start moving straight ahead. And when it sees white, it's going to turn a little bit. And when it doesn't see white, it's going to turn back. So hopefully that'll get you into a good battle state. And when you've finished, press stop. When you press play again, the sword should go back in position, ready for you to press the left button. So it is time to pause the video so you can see all the rules and the code example as I explain now the teacher setup. Really, you just need two parallel pieces of masking tape on the floor. That can be any length you like. I recommend somewhere between one and a half to two meters long. And they do need to be parallel and they do need to be 12 and a half centimeters apart from the outside edge of both. So 125 mils or 12 and a half centimeters apart from the very outside of both pieces of tape. Once you've set that up, you're pretty much good to go. Each jousting chariot will also need their own minifigure, of course. There are some supplied in the Spike Prime kits, but you can make it interesting by getting kids to bring in their own minifigure for their jousters if you want to. Um, or you can just use the one supplied. You will need to grab the instructions from the description of this video. So look for the file called um, joustingstick.pdf and once you 
have a look at that. You could print it out for the kids. Uh, it would be a lot of paper involved if you printed the whole thing out. So you could print maybe four pages to a page or something. Or you could just uh, share that PDF with them and they maybe they could look at it on their device. That would be the best way to go. But it's pretty strict instructions there on how to build the exact jousting stick. So everyone's got the same jousting stick. And don't forget to check out uh, the description of my video for more ways to score. You could have knockout competitions, etc. You can have ways for students to assess themselves. And of course, there is that a student uh, assessment worksheet for teachers to fill out so teachers uh, can assess the kids during the lesson if that's something that you like. I've got uh, an old video here of some jousting which I thought you might be interested in. It was the first time I did jousting. I used Lego Kingdom Knights which was pretty amazing and not everyone has access to those so I just did this one with minifigures. I also had some timber uh, but I found that masking tape is probably better.